now that we uh, went over core structures, we can go over the four major uh, economic market models. Perfect competition, monopolistic competition, oligopoly, and monopoly. And uh, this is a continuum. And if you want to know what a continuum is, it means things don't fall neatly in one market model. They transfer in between models. Businesses could go from monopoly to oligopoly. For instance, like Microsoft had a monopoly on a computer pro on the computer operating system, and now you have Apple and you have some other systems. So they no longer have monopoly, but they move more into an oligopoly. Uh, some businesses start out as perfect competitors, and then they become more like monopolistic competitors. But every business and falls within one of these, somewhere near one of these categories. And some businesses have a number of businesses that fall in parts of the category. For instance, a pizzeria might be in almost a perfectly considered competitive situation in terms of selling actual plain pies, but may have some dishes in their restaurant that's more like a monopolistic competitor. So important chapters to read now, seven to 10. But just to look at the general characteristics, a perfect competition has a large number of competitors. The nature of the product is undifferentiated. You, there are no barriers to entry and every market participant understands all of the information so for instance agriculture always a good example of or oil where basically when it comes out of the ground there's a market for it you could sell as much oil or as much corn as you want but you have to accept the market price there's a perfect competition there's no barriers to entry in the sense that people can enter it but they don't need any special licenses they really do need the land or they need the oil well but they don't need anything more than that uh, so it's perfect competition uh, monopolistic comp competition is a brands there are a large number of competitors they're differentiated few barriers to entry like shoes and pants and toothbrushes things like that and again they get into this a little bit more in those YouTubes I sent you but those are examples of things that would normally be perfectly competitive like a toothbrush or a belt or a pair of pants but they're differentiated by branding and by um, color and by and you know endorsements so I want you to, this is an introduction into that I'll go into each one on its own but you should definitely be reading chapter 7 to start to understand where your business fits most businesses fit in this category the third is oligopoly and that's a small number of very large competitors with many barriers to entry a classic example of the automakers six or seven major production automakers uh, competing with one another more concerned with what the next competitor does and then with the market since you have to buy a car anyway it's who you're gonna buy the car from so an oligopoly would be the automakers they were smaller they are a bunch of monopolies small monopolies almost uh, the aircraft makers big giant uh, companies and finally when there's only one uh, only one supplier in the market and they have many barriers to entry, it's a monopoly. And in this country, we know monopolies are illegal, except when the government sanctions them. And in this case, we're talking about the utilities, the electric utilities, the gas utilities. They are sanctioned, they are controlled by individuals or private industry, but the government watches what they do. And they do that for the sake of security. I mean, you can't have, it's, it wouldn't be efficient to have three or four electric companies. It also wouldn't be probably safe since you're, system your grid would be open to uh, in these days hacking and foreign influence or any kind of I think about it if there's a war but we're having one utility reporting to a utility commission prices could be structured the market could be fair electricity and and, and it gets delivered uh, efficiently and the government has some sort of control over security and also in the event of a catastrophe like Superstorm Standy you have one utility which you could work with in order to get things back up so but in generally speaking monopoly would be considered illegal in this country and that's when the antitrust division walks in so we'll talk more about that but all of these systems have the same core structures as we saw in the last video and we'll talk more about how pricing is differentiated very important that you understand this and you read these chapters closely